Good morning, everyone. That was fantastic. Thank you. That's wonderful. Welcome to our service this morning for the second Sunday after Pentecost. It is June 19th, and this week is Father's Day. So happy, <laughs> happy Father's Day to all the, all the fathers and the fathering people, whether you're father by birth or adoption or just mentoring or you know, whether you're a man or a woman, there's a lot of people that, that father, that parent, that mentor, that care for others. And so let's, let's lift that up today and be thankful for one another. And so today we're exploring the question. It's going to be an interesting question that we get. And I think it's a question many of us ask ourselves on a regular basis. And Elijah got asked that question. So we'll hear that in, in our, I'm going to leave it as a surprise. It's, 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 it's going to be in the scripture reading. So, Welcome all to our worship this morning. I welcome you in the name of God. Je vous souhaite toutes et tous la bienvenue au nom de Dieu. And I invite our announcer and speaker, Patty Murphy, today to lead us in the work and life of the people. Good morning, everyone. And Ryan, you took the words right out of my mouth. Happy Father's Day. And, and, and to all the fathers that are here with us and the, all the fathers that are with us in our hearts that we remember. And uh, so that's something we're celebrating. We seem to be celebrating all kinds of wonderful things these days. I understand there was a wonderful celebration for Ryan yesterday, and Wendy's going to say a few words after that. Um, so uh, next Sunday is our annual ecumenical service at the town hall in Bay Durfe. It's outside, so bring a folding chair. And this sort of marks the last services that we do together as a group, either in our building or the ecumenical service, which is an annual event for us. For the summer, check the website. There will be a listing posted if you want to attend services on the West Island in one of the other United Churches. And uh, also, uh, this wraps up our season's activities. Uh, Boutique 24 had their last very successful closing day this week and congratulations and special thanks to June and Peter and all the other volunteers. They broke records yet again. If you have things that you want to donate to Boutique 24, please save them at home till the fall. That's what they would like, okay? Uh, also, Bryson's yoga classes have wrapped up for the season. We're so grateful to have these wonderful people that do these things for us and offer us these services like Bryson's yoga classes. They're wrapped up also for the season, so we'll stay tuned and we'll hear about it when it starts up again in the fall. And if you attended either the Perry Je T'aime Cabaret or Pierre's retirement party, and if you didn't attend, you might want to see the pictures. And our dear friend Franz Lecluse always commemorate some of these special occasions with photo albums and I don't know if Franz is with us today but um, he has uh, two photo albums on these events and they were sent out in the Merging Waters midweek message last week so if you didn't attend you can see what happened what you missed and if you did attend maybe you'd like to see the pictures. Church Cafe this week is our last one on the 24th at three o'clock and what can I say about how to get messages or share information over the summer. What I can say is if you have anything urgent or you need pastoral care, please call either one of the church uh, phone lines and leave a message because those phone lines will be monitored and someone will get back to you. And uh, I think that's it for me for now. So let's worship. Oh, no. Over to Wendy. Well, as Patty already mentioned, um, we had a, a wonderful celebration for Ryan uh, yesterday. And really, um, I think he was very pleased <coughs> with everything that went on. And it was a wonderful service. Uh, I, my part here just now was to really to thank everybody who participated. Val Strong did a great job in um, getting people to make um, so many pie slash tarts. So we had an abundance, which I know we're very much enjoyed. So again, just many thanks to everybody who helped out. As, as usual, um, cleanup was wonderful and went smoothly. Anything else I need to say? I think all good. So again, thank you.
And thank you, Patty and Wendy, for that. And thanks to everyone for the celebration yesterday. It was a wonderful service together where we celebrated our, our time together the last four years and blessed one another for the journey forward as we all go on paths of faith uh, together and apart. And so that was a wonderful time, a wonderful time. And as we move through this wonderful time after acknowledging the work that is worship that we celebrate every Sunday, in our lives of faith throughout the week. Let us begin, well, continue with our territorial acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the lands our churches and many of our homes sit on have been stewarded by the first peoples of Turtle Island, among them the Ganagan Haga Mohawk peoples, as well as the nations of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy the neighboring Huron-Wendat, Anishinaabeg, and Abenaki peoples. We commit ourselves as a faith community to the multi-generational work of reconciliation, the pursuit of true justice and flourishing well-being for all peoples who now call Canada home. We have already illumined, illuminated our candle this morning. It is lit and it shines at the center of our welcome, a symbol of our inclusion for all people and the beauty that is Merging Water's commitment to sharing God's love with all. We acknowledge that light shines within us in the dark and light places. And it may be embodied in flame, but it is lived out in the world. Let us join in our spiritual focus. As a deer longs for flowing streams of water, our souls reach out to seek our God. The cleansing of the rain and the refreshing of a pool and the predictability of a faucet. With glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, our voices lift toward our God. Where is our God? In the melody of voices raised in concert, in the stillness of silence, in the cacophony of spontaneous praise. As deep calls to deep, we come to worship the living God. Where is our God? In the echoes of our prayers, in the reverence of bowed heads, in the hope of raised faces, the Holy One in all is with us. Our welcoming hymn comes from Voices United, number 374, Come and Find the Quiet Center. Let us sing, and you may stand as you feel called.
may be seated. I invite you to join in our prayer of approach. Holy wisdom, we hear you calling us together to hope in your name. Ignite sacred courage in us to proclaim the good news of justice from the comfort of the sanctuary. To the public witness of the city gates, inspire a compelling vision of a gracious, beloved, an empowered community that propels us to confront inequities, challenge privilege, and participate in your creative work in our time. Renew our hope for humanity so that we might rejoice in this inhabited world and delight in our siblings. Amen. I invite Patty to lead us in our scripture this morning. You want to borrow this? Okay. Good. This is from 1 Kings 19. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake, baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank. And lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus.
Thank you, Patty. As we reflect on what the Spirit is saying to the churches, let us lift our voices and our spirits in the singing of O Love That Wilt Not Let Me Go from Voices United 658. Please be seated. Oops, there's a little typo in there. Yeah. The questio. <laughs> it's, 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 it's Latin. <laughs> it's, there we go. <laughs> Let's join in prayer, please. God of the questions, God whom we seek. May the words that we hear today and the reflections of all our hearts lead to actions that awaken, refreshed, and nourished your dream for this world. Loving God, our rest and our restorer, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The question, what are you doing here? Eliza. Well, we might find out it's not just for Eliza. That question was something on the 7th of June. I was driving from Sudbury to Montreal, having finished a move in a thunderstorm in a Nissan Micra at 100 kilometers an hour, <laughs> being splashed by semi-trucks and the occasional moment of hydroplaning until I found the right rut. And that question came to my mind, what are you doing here, Ryan? And of course, was reminded of the reading for this week and 
I had this whole idea about a journey and the traveling and it being a perfect analogy, and then I completely lost it because I was focusing on driving. So we're going to talk about something else. What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here, church? As a gay man, I've been asked that a lot by friends in the gay community. What are you doing Sunday? You want to come for brunch? Well, no, I got church. What are you doing at a church? I'm a minister. You're a, wait, you can do that? Yes, yes, I can. It's 1988, actually. And then they get the history. And then they're like, wow, that's awesome. What do they do there? And I'm like, well, why don't you come and ask? <laughs> but of course, they live downtown, or they're busy, or they have brunch. So, I'm like, well, maybe we'll have church brunch sometime. What do you do here? What are you doing here? Well, in the theological, churchy way, I would answer, being image bearers of God, bearing God's love to the world. That's the very sermon-written version of what that is. Prophets. They were not only bearers of God's message, but they were also people. People who were called to tell truth to power, to call society, to call the people when they had lost their way, to call them back into relationship with God to remind them that even as they turn away from God, from one another, from their neighbors, from the world, from themselves, that God is always there, always faithful, always present, ever loving. And the prophets were there to call them back, and God was always there to come back to us, to bring us back into relationship. What are you doing here, Elijah? God asks, from within the sound of sheer silence. Was that it? Well, why the sound of sheer silence? I tell you, in between the splashes on that highway, it was pretty quiet. And boy, was I paying attention. And I get that with Elijah. He's overwhelmed by the storms of life. He doesn't hear God in those storms. He's overwrought by the fires of conflict and destruction, of death and disorder. He can't hear God at those times. He can't feel God's presence. He's blown by the winds of change and upset by violence all around him, and he cannot see God at work. So he needs the silence as well as a nap and a snack, maybe two, to quiet himself enough to hear that God has been there the entire time, calling for peace, speaking acceptance, calling him to share the message for all to be one in the divine. And so as one called to faith and faithfulness, God calls Elijah to be at peace and simply be so that he can be in touch with the Holy One and all and bear out into the world the word of love and justice. What are you doing here? Asks the Sacred Presence. But Elijah thinks he's alone. They've killed all the other prophets. I'm all by myself in the wilderness. Elijah knows he's in danger. And well, that's very true. Bearing God's message of release for captives, of justice for the poor, and relationship for those who are outcast has always been risky. You go to church? What are you doing there? And perhaps Elijah was concerned that when they turned on their neighbors, 
They were off killing all the prophets of Baal and other gods. They worship wrong. They believe the wrong stuff. They believe something different than us. Get them. And so he's like, well, once they're done with those guys, they're coming for me. And doesn't it sometimes feel like that when you're out with your friends? What are you doing on Sunday morning? Why aren't you coming to Brent? <laughs> Why aren't you at baseball right now? Well, there's a little bit of that when we have social, I mean, and hopefully they're not stoning prophets in the, you know, Dominion Square. But there's that social pressure, there's that danger, there's that will we be put on the outside if we're telling people, well, if you have extra money, we can give it to the poor. If we have maybe a little less for some of us who have too much, maybe others who don't have enough can have more. Maybe if we walk to the store, the earth won't choke to death on our car fumes. Maybe if we make a little less money in corporations, there'll be a little more justice. Maybe if it's people that are, what are, are, are the important part. Maybe if it's dignity and love. And when we speak that, we, we take risks, don't we? Because if they can, and, and of course it feels risky, because if they can persecute other faiths and prophets because they don't agree what's going to happen to Elijah, what's going to happen to us, right? Well, Elijah's terrified, he's exhausted, he's hungry, he's probably, I don't know, either hot or cold or both. He's asleep in a cave. And that's when God comes to him. That's when he's opened up enough. Because he eats and he sleeps, he gets nourishment. Of course, when we're talking about faith, we're talking about spiritual nourishment. How do we nourish our faith. What are we doing here? We're singing our songs. We're lifting our prayers. We're holding one another in love. We're encouraging one another. And yes, we're going to eat. <laughs> we get spiritual respite. We get spiritual nourishment. We encourage one another in our living and our working together. And we find, just like Elijah, we are not alone. We live in God's world. The presence is there. It doesn't leave him, and it doesn't leave us, and it offers rest and renewal, nourishment and inspiration. Even when we get distracted by the storms of life, even when we're frustrated, by the complexity and the doings and the goings, when we become self-involved and self-concerned and we don't notice that presence, it's there. And then God comes in many ways, perhaps in the ups and downs of life, and asks, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Elijah? The comfort and the support comes, but it comes with the challenge. You know what I'm asking you for. You know that I'm asking you to renew relationship with the people, just as I have renewed it with you. For they have moved away from me. They have lost track of where I am. They have forgotten that I am in them and they are in me. That I am in the fire beside them, to warm them, that I am in the storm to refresh and renew so that the rains may make the flowers grow. And yes, that I am in the quiet of the storms within. But now that you've been refreshed, go. Go, Elijah, and remind them that they are mine, that they are loved, one, together, and meant for love. They are themselves meant for love. Not just loving themselves, but loving one another. 
So he goes. And the people will ask him when he's there, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he will answer, being an image bearer of God, bearing God's love to the world, witnessing to God, showing up in the worst places and turning them into sacred places. And of course, isn't that all places? And then there's us, like Elijah. We've had our times of passionate efforts, spreading the good news through actions of love and generosity and kindness and community. And sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we get caught up in the work. And it becomes about the meetings, and it becomes about the bureaucracies, and it becomes about the details and the trials and the tribulations. And of course it does. We're humans. We get tired. We get frustrated, banging our heads on walls, you know? We get scared and doubtful, and we get distracted. While God is faithful and trusting in our capacity. And every once in a while, turns to us to return. There's those moments amongst the winds and the storms and the fires and the troubles. Someone puts their hand on your shoulder. Someone gives you a smile and asks, how are you? Someone says, let's pray together. Or a bunny hops across your lawn just at the right time. <laughs> and you can slow down for just long enough to hear God saying, what are you doing here? Did you know I've been here the whole time and I love you? Have a nap. Have a snack. And then get out on your feet or your chair, or your conveyance of any kind. Get on your skates, get on your bike, get going. And tell my precious people they are mine. And so we ask ourselves, what are we doing here? What are you doing here, Merging Waters? Right now, we're getting out of the wind. We're out of the rain. We're out of the fires and the struggles here in this sacred place. So we may be refreshed and renewed and pray together and encourage each other and look for hope together and find God's love. We support one another. We encourage one another. We lift our thanks to the divine for the community and the life that we share. We have a snack, we have a rest, and then we go out into the world and spread the good news of love that we have found, that we have heard, to return others and ourselves to relationship, to our work and our words. What are you doing here, Emerging Waters? Being image bearers of God bearing God's love to the world. Keep it up. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay. What are you doing here, computer? There we go. We offer our time, our talent, our treasures, our reflections, and our commitments let us reflect upon them and celebrate them together in our musical offering.
Amen, I said, and then I invited us to prayer. Let us join in our prayer of dedication. We give you thanks, God our help, for the abundance of the gifts that you have planted in us as seeds that we may share in bloom. May these offerings be received and magnified for your glory. And we continue in our prayer with our time of prayers of joy and concern. Our concerns, our burdens are lightened as we carry them together with one another and with God. And our joys are brightened as they are celebrated together in community. We give our thanks, Creator God, for the fathers in our lives. Fatherhood does not come with a manual, and reality teaches us that some fathers excel while others fail. We ask for your blessings for them all and forgiveness where it is needed. This Father's Day, we remember the many sacrifices fathers make for their children and families and the ways, both big and small, they lift children to achieve dreams sought beyond reach. So too, loving God, we remember all those who have helped fill the void when fathers pass early or are absent, grandfathers and uncles, brothers and cousins, teachers, pastors and coaches, and the women of our families. For those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. As we lift these, time, these prayers, loving God, we take a moment of silent prayer to lift those concerns and those joys that live within our hearts. And we may speak them aloud if we feel called to as well. for joys of rainbows and community, for pies, for paths. We lift our thanksgiving for those who live in times and places of war, for the wounds inflicted upon Mother Earth, for the challenges and scars of family brokenness and the brokenness of society. We lift our hopes that your word of love shall be spoken to us and through us so we may help the world and all in it to heal, grow, and flourish. In this time of prayer together, we lift our concerns as a community and share our love for Jack and family, for Dan and Lauren, for Douglas, for Bill P., for Barbara and Bill, for the Lang Moreau family, for Giselle and Janet, for the family and friends of Andre Dijksler, who join in your mourning and your care. And we lift our prayers and our love for Mike. And as we join in community of prayer with the wider community, we pray together with all of Nagunhaga Regional Council and lift our thanksgiving and blessings for the Armenian Evangelical United Church in Laval. May their mission and ministry continue to flourish and be a blessing to all. And in our prayer, we join together in the words that Jesus taught us as we pray in your holy name, the Jesus prayer for today. 
O source of life, connectedness beyond simple perception, we hold our experience of you as sacred. May we choose to live the good you call for in our actions as well as in our imaginings. Nourish our bodies and spirits, inspiring us to share the abundance that we have. Challenge us to show understanding and love for others as we need to be understood and loved. Help us overcome our shortcomings to be our best selves through the faith that you have always shown in us. May we all make it so. Amen. Our commissioning hymn comes from More Voices, number 150, Spirit of God, Be Our Breath. That was a good one. Go from this time of togetherness with the spirit of God's love overflowing from your hearts to bear witness, to be image bearers of God through love to all the world. Go now in peace. Allez dans le Père Seigneur, vaya con Dios, skerengoa, peg palayan kayo neng Dios. Amen. Kind of choked up here. <laughs> so I wanted to do something, uh, a special blessing, a special kind of sending song for Ryan. And I thought about it for a while and nothing was coming to mind. I was going through all of the different um, blessings that I knew and I went out for a run and while I was out jogging, um, a song popped into my head. It was called Benediction, written by a member of our choir, Noreen Nichols, in the 1990s. And uh, so I went home and I, I, I found a copy of it and I looked at it and I said, there's something special to it. A sending song for Ryan. And so these are the words I, I put to that melody that uh, Noreen wrote. The love of Christ be with you. Let wisdom be your guide. See blessings all around you. In peace may you abide. From one to another God's light may you impart and always pay duty. 